presented by We'll Grow. Women are obsessed with perfection. It's a concept we all have thought about, maybe a little too much. Mariana Tenzio is a Venezuelan journalist that just went from being undocumented in the United States to be the only Latina news reporter on MSNBC. How did she make it? Just when she realized that even when you're told you need to be perfect, you've got to be only perfectly you. I am Mayo Gando, and this is the Fuego Fans. I am here with Mariana Tencio. Mariana, first of all, you are the badass Venezolana, amazing friend that I have here that I, I admire the most. Seriously, be careful with the mic, by the way. You know what I love the most about all that? First of all, how you pronounce my name. Mariana I'm here Tencio. with the wonderful Mayo Cando. Yes. But then that you called me a friend, te lo juro que that means the world to me because I've watched your career take off and you never forget your friends. I've gotten I, on stage with you. I've seen yeah. like all the iterations of Maya that <laughs> just makes you like perfectly Maya. So. Perfectly Maya. <laughs> perfectly you. What is being perfectly you? What a wonderful name for a book, by the way. Because you know this, as women, we we deal with this idea of perfection, especially as immigrant women. Yes, también, no? tell me about it. Because we have to come here to this country and redefine like who we are and really question like, quién soy? Oh my God. What do I want? We have to talk about this like deeper, In deeper. Depth, yes. Yeah, because first of all, when I came here to the States six years ago, I didn't know any, any English, but you were kind of, I mean, you're way ahead Um, I'm not way ahead. No? Helicopter up yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maya, six years ago, you yes. speak beautifully. Oh my God, Kaya thank you. you. That speak means beautifully. our. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. First of all, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfectly me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you asked me about the idea of perfection, que no te yeah. fundi, which I talk about. That's the essence of the book is perfection is not the absence of flaws. It's just the commitment to give our best in everything we do. That's so beautiful. It's what you do. Mm -hmm. Tú le metes el alma. So you pour your heart and soul into every podcast, into every project, into every workout, I have to say. Yes. Into <laughs> learning English, into every single story that you put out there. So yeah. that, is, that is the definition of being not perfect, but perfectly you. Yeah, but you, you have to make peace, peace with the idea that you're going to be flawed. You know? We and that was say so brilliantly flawed. Uh, yeah, I was so hard harsh on myself I've been harsh on myself for the last six years I'm starting to learn to understand that I am more than enough because I wanted to be perfect you know and I wanted to get rid of my accent because I thought my accent was something wrong mm -hmm. you know like it made me look stupid like I couldn't express my ideas properly and I felt like less you know like like less than I used thinking, to be before instead of thinking it actually should be worn as a medal mm -hmm. because it showcases the fact that I can speak hello not only one language but two so yeah. it, it's the opposite of making you look stupid quote unquote it actually means that you're but pretty brilliant but but how was your process how did you get here to to feel confident I mean, live TV <laughs> in English with no, no script. Say, I thought I was gonna die. I thought that the I'm like, am I gonna mix my languages and be like, uh, uh, and not know like what words to use? Especially as breaking news, like you cover trials, you cover like weather, you cover politics, all these things that have like very specific terminology. Yeah. But the first thing that I tell readers in the book is to not be afraid because if you don't try knowing that it's okay to fail but if you don't give yourself that shot like just to start you have to start somewhere you're never going to discover this potential that you have yeah embrace that power totally. that you have totally. so see if see, see tu, o sea, if you would have been like oh i don't speak english like i'm never gonna do it no o sea, it's it's starting out knowing it's not gonna be perfect the first yeah. time around and that's totally. okay yeah but we we work in front of the camera so they're different you know um como que criterios you know it's a because, standard it's a standard. yeah mm -hmm. it's different because if you work behind the camera you can have an accent you can actually have a broken english and be successful but you have to be smooth and look you know confident and all that how do you do it how long it took you to be here so i came to the united states 10 years ago okay. now and it was three years ago that 
I said, I'm going to try this English speaking television thing. Because I was three very, years ago, three years ago. Girl. I was very, I was at Univision, I already had a career, you know, I had won a couple of awards. I already sat in the anchor chair a couple of times. So I could have been like, Estoy I'm mm-hmm. comfortable here. I'm going to stay. But then I'm like, I know that I have this potential, you know, like for, for people listening, you know, when you have something inside of you that you're yeah. like, this is like a gift that I'm meant to put toward my purpose. You yes. know? And I said, I just have to like, no ser miedosa, not be a freaking scaredy cat and just go ahead and do it, you know? Yeah. And in, in that journey, it was hard. O sea, it was hard because there's the language. There's also walking into this new place, right? These newsrooms where many times you're the only Latina in the room. Yeah. Most times you're the only Spanish speaker in the room and also saying like our stories are important, you know, yeah. and there's nobody else here that is vouching for them. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, I thought the battle was going to be getting there. But once I was there, it was realizing like, no, mama, o sea, aquí, <laughs> o sea, here is the it was where the real battle this is lies, it. Yeah. is in making our stories of value. And that's why this book, you know, it ever since I crossed over to English, I started getting messages from young people, like from young Latinos, Latinas, people just from different backgrounds and ages, like, how did you make it? Like, you inspired me so much. And I said, I owe this to them. So more than my personal story, I am interested to know in what the readers are going to discover about themselves. A los que estén escuchando, es sobre ustedes y lo que van a descubrir de ustedes mismos. That's beautiful. For example, Maya, what makes you perfectly Maya? I think, and um, I'm so all over the place all the time. <laughs> Seriously, I I try to do everything. I do it all, all by myself, like I'm a control freak and everything. And I think my energy is what has brought me here. Not even talent, not even preparation. It's more like something that is in you that you don't even control. And when I try to tame it, like, I don't want to be this person. It's way too extreme and too annoying. It's like, but this is me. Like, I Total. have to accept it. And I think that's that's, that's it. Total. I, yeah. So in reading this book, like, that's going to be like an assertion of this is who I am. And, pero mira, you've inspired so many women, Maya. You've inspired oh, so many of us you. in being yourself and seeing and that you, you hit the nail on the head. It's not taming or eliminating like our quote unquote weaknesses. Yeah. It's how can we turn But you this know, but you know, when you do the crossover is uh, like culturally is different. The sense of, of humor and everything, the way they talk to each other. So I felt like I had to fit in and I felt like I, I wasn't right for this place it's weird but now you're didn't you feel didn't you feel that way Dale, yeah absolutely but i but then i said it's about creating your own space as immigrants in this country we create space for ourselves i'm learning women, that now like i'm accepting that now Porque it's not about fitting in a box of what like a latina should sound like or look like it's about expanding so no nos metemos en una caja we expand yes i y love it no les gusta, mi amor, i'm sorry bueno, che pa allá, <laughs> When I learned English, I I felt like I needed to develop like a new personality. Do you do you go through that? Mira, I, if I were to show you videos of when I started in English, it's like, hi, this is Mariana, <laughs> and I to to to, and then I look back at that, and I'm like, I was so insecure about yeah, my. Yeah, This is not me. This is not me. But it's realizing one day, like, wow, so why do I have to like strip away this thing that makes me like perfectly me instead of celebrating? Yeah. Yeah, well, I try to be like more relaxed. I, 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 I've always dream of being like Natalie Portman. She's so composed. No, but you have the All face, the pixie her cut. interviews but you are have like, like, oh my god, she's always in control. <laughs> but I cannot be like that, and I'm like, oh, oh. But I have to accept it. Not so don't you feel like you want to be someone else when you speak English? Somehow, I, the, why? But then, but then, you know, you're, you're. You are not giving the world like what Maya was meant to give the world. That's beautiful. Sí. I like it. <laughs> Let's see. Voy a pensar que es así, okay? No, Maya, claro que sí. Tú eclipsas a 300 ¿Eh? Natalie Portman, o sea, con tu personalidad. Ay, qué bella, gracias. Uh, you know what? Can I just say, yeah, this please. Is that I wear my 5'2". 5'1". I'm sorry. I'm 5'2", <laughs> you're 5'1". Okay, okay. I wear my 5'1 dress uh-huh. that you gave me on very special occasions in Miami. Ahí lo tengo en mi cuarto. Yeah. I love it. 
Yeah, my little How black does it dress. Look? I want to see it. Beautiful with the cosu hombreras because mm. that gives me more height. That's why I said that's cinco a good dos. thing. Yeah, yeah cinco <laughs> dos. I feel I feel like a cinco seven. <laughs> <laughs> Failure. It's weird because some people want to kind of hide it. Like no, I'm I'm a successful woman and I never fail. Like I'm always going forward. But for me, failure is so important in the process to get better every day. And I think failure kind of guides you to to your path somehow. So what brought you here? What, What were those failures? That's a great question. In the book, I talk about my first big failure in in the United States of America was getting fired from my first job in journalism. Yo me quería morir. Got this scholarship to Columbia University Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, I'm gonna graduate from an Ivy League, everything's gonna be perfect. This is chapter six of the book, which is one of my favorite ones. Porque- I I need to read it by the way. I'm a terrible reader. No, I'm but sorry, you know but I, I'm do, do you have you, it audio? audio I'm gonna book? give you a recommendation. Exactly for you awesome. and all your readers, especially if you want to perfect your English. Mm-hmm. I download the yeah. audiobook in English. It's so much better, by the way, for those of you who are learning English. And the great thing mm-hmm. about the audiobook is that it's in English, but with our accent. And then I throw in the pero de mi gente. Oh, I so love it! We get the you did it yourself. I did it myself in Spanish and English. Oh my god! No, I wasn't that ca- I wasn't at audio booth for like weeks. In That's esa cabina, amazing. Me salieron Así oh que, my por favor, god! I'm <laughs> gonna do that right, yeah, like next week. But I the swear. English one. The English Mi one. cardio. <laughs> Lo voy a hacer con Mariana. Yes. <laughs> so I went to that newsroom. Yeah, I, I, I just interviewed Isabel Allende. So I was like, this is gonna be great. No sé qué. And I saw they were taking away the furniture, and I'm like, what's happening? And they said, Miss Mariana Tencio, can you come with us? And I was like, what's happening? And they dijeron. I'm sorry to tell you, your position is no longer available. And they were what? sponsoring my visa. So more than my job, it was like I was going to be yeah, undocumented like, or have to go back to Venezuela, which is, you know, not, a not good an idea. option. <laughs> so I was like, what What about my visa with like a knot in my throat? And they're like, Mi atención, we are letting go of almost half the company. Your visa is the last concern that we have right now and I felt like my life was over in that moment oh my god that was so how, how long ago that was in 2009 it was the recession so it was yeah. a terrible time to be out of a job so I poured my heart and soul into that chapter because I want everybody reading this book and listening to this book to know that your life a is not over if you get fired and right now um, 10 years later I'm actually thankful that it happened to me it made me so much stronger yeah it made me realize nobody is indispensable. So everybody, I mean, nobody is indispensable, as they say. And thirdly, it just made me be prepared that you always need a plan B. Oh, yes. Actually, I talk about this all the time. Failure is my brand. Like, I love it. I embrace it. And I feel like any every failure in my life not only taught me something new that I obviously didn't know, but also, like, made me better and made me realize that I am able to do bigger things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because sometimes you're so comfortable in a successful situation but it's so limited it's just a oh, tiny yeah. little box you can go just into, como que ya llegas a un techo y that's it right and you feel comfortable and if, if you're making money you feel like oh this is it it's cool but then they push you they push you uh, out of the way like no this is not for you anymore you so. know when I think of failure and I always say this I think about learning to ride a bike all of us want that photo as a little kid of like, I learned how to ride a bike with the, without the little wheels in the back, without the training wheels. Pero quien, quien de nosotros? O sea, how many people learned how to ride a bike right away? Mm-hmm. It's all the steps of falling, getting back on the bike that bring you to that ultimate like successful photo of I made it. So we yeah. have to remember like learning how to ride a bike. Yes. And that's life. Yeah. Failure is a part of success. It is. And it's necessary. Also, it's not a straightforward uh, line mm-hmm. like you have some success then you have failure and you get back uh, on your feet again and then you have a little bit of failure or maybe a bigger failure do you have like what do you consider your biggest failure ever ever ever, ever? ever? it's kind of sad oh. are you ready for a sad story maybe bueno when I lost my dad last year and I couldn't save him. For me, it was a failure. You know? Why? Porque I did everything that I thought that I could do. You know, I went to Venezuela. I tried to get all the medicine that, as you know, is so hard to get down there. And 
when I ultimately lost him, I'm like, this is not how it was supposed to be. You know, like yeah. I did everything that I could. Like my family did everything that we could. But you cannot control that. No. And now it's realizing it is a wound that will not entirely heal, but it is honoring him in everything that I do. And that's turning that moment that for me was a failure into a success story. That's why I dedicated the book to him. Aww. Y le dije, in the first page you'll read, it says, for papi, love is infinite, so is our bond. And you have you had a, a beautiful relationship. Demasiado. Everybody can see it just by reading your, your tus dedicaciones, your captions, everything. Not only after that terrible story happened, but before. So I could see, like, I was like, oh, what a beautiful relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Like, so I turned that pain into something beautiful, which is this book. So I'm so honored, Maya, that you are making it your own and being a part of my success story and honoring his memory. Oh, de verdad. that's so beautiful. And for all of you listening, gracias, de verdad. Oh. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm no tengo palabras ahora. <laughs> oh, but talking about failure though, like you seeing you on stage in Miami, I went to see your performance. It, you make it fun and you make it like this is not the end of the world, you know? It is not. You just get back up on You your know feet. what happened and I'm trying to understand this. We are so obsessed with ourselves. We think everybody's just criticizing uh, um, criticizing you all the time. And everybody has their own issues. Like, everybody's just in their heads. Like, oh, my God, did I say that right? Did I look right? Like, you're always, like, criticizing yourself. Nobody's paying attention to you that much, okay? So I, I'm trying to understand that and live life like nobody's really watching you. And that way you'll be just free to do everything yeah. you want. Yeah, so being perfectly you and understanding that process to just make peace with your flaws, did it take you years? No. No. It's it's a process that you actually said like, okay, I'm going to accept this part of Mariana. You know that it's, it's discovering and that's what I l wanted to do in the book is every chapter has like practical advice for the reader like okay Mariana made these mistakes like Mariana had these weaknesses like what does that mean for my life every chapter has positive takeaways for the reader to say like oh this is what I have to apply in my own life and ultimately what I learned about not being perfect quote unquote and weaknesses is not seeing them as something you have to eliminate or minimize but how can you make them strengths mm -hmm. how can you flip the script you know it's starting out in news in english for example if you know being like oh spanish is your first language like english is not your first language like oh you don't have like you're not a citizen you're an immigrant all those things could have been seen as weaknesses but i said to myself like how can i have a unique brand on television mm -hmm. with my name and my story how can i cover immigration like nobody else can because we know yeah. what it's like to be a part of that community how can we for example i covered an earthquake in mexico and i just started speaking spanish to the people there and translating live in english and people in new york watching were like oh my god like, you're we're, awesome <laughs> like, well, you're literally giving a pe people a voice mm -hmm. through these things that were like supposed to be weaknesses mm -hmm. so it's looking at yourself and making a list, you know, of like strengths and weaknesses. How can I take these cons and make them, like turn them into competitive advantages? That's amazing. Take notes, people. <laughs> take notes. How, how was your process, by the way? Because um, learning a language for just speaking to people, it's just regular process. It's pretty simple. Watch TV and watch movies and stuff like that. But how do you get ready to be in front of the camera live just figure it out what to, what to say you don't have any script is there a process can you actually learn that talent I think that we all have a tool in our hands that can help us do that that we don't think of it as the best training for being live on television which is what you do which is social media like you have an audience that you can be live for you can do Instagram live you can do stories like force yourself to do them in English Si no te gusta, lo borras. You know, get people to give you feedback. Like, you have a captive live audience that you can train, quote unquote, with every day. Six years ago, we didn't have that. Like, that didn't exist. You mm -hmm. had to go there mm -hmm. and, like, meter la pata, possibly, mm -hmm. on television, like, live on television. Yes. I urge all of you, like, if you want to do that, don't be scared. Just start trying it out in your own platforms, on YouTube. And I also recommend getting a couple of people who you really trust 
to give you feedback. It's tough, Mira. Sometimes it's no, tough to that's watch the yourself thing. and be like, oh my god. I don't. Like, I don't like. I, I don't like to to watch any videos of me in English, especially. But like Maya, I. I oh, I know, so well. I, <laughs> I know that I have to. I know that I have to. That's the only way to kind of understand what I, what I'm doing to wrong. Learn. Yeah, but it's so hard. Well, you have to get over it. You have to. <laughs> and I hope, listen, this book is going to give you the courage to try it out. Porque I'm already, already inspired. <laughs> I'm going to get I'm going to be amazing after that book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's realizing that it, but also it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Porque what makes you like so special and uniquely positioned to give back to the world, es que when it comes out in a Maya form, like that is what's going to make the change. When I look at you and I see like a very positive, energetic person all, all the time. And uh, I, don't, I, I don't know about you, but that work you're doing is demanding and tiring. <laughs> Not only traveling, but also facing so many terrible stories. Because they rarely send you out for good news. Exactly. <laughs> so how do you keep yourself sane? I think it's purpose, you know, it's realizing like God put me here for a reason and this is what I was meant to do. I see it with you. You're also traveling like crazy to Chile and all these places to present your show, Mexico. And it's like when you do what you love, like there's no stopping you. But what keeps me going always is connecting with people. I meet people, Maya, in the worst possible circumstances, people that have lost their homes, people that are going through protests or riots or natural disasters. And I, te lo juro, people connect with you in those moments and you realize like beyond labels and political affiliations and whatever's happening in the world and languages, we are human beings, mm -hmm. you know, connecting mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and that just like fills my heart and my soul. But oh. the traveling can get pretty tiring. Yes. And some days I'm like, I can't anymore, you know. I drink lots of coffee. I'm a coffee addict. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me too. Total, no, o sea, yo soy grave. I need it. No, grave, grave. Yeah. I, I, and I drink my coffee very black. Yeah, me too. No sugar, actually. No sugar. No just, sugar? Just black And I coffee. only do, and you'll appreciate this, I only do a couple of drops of milk, which in Venezolano means un marrón. Uh -huh. Un corta, time, oh, cortado un para los cubanos. Sí. Every time that I ask for un marrón or a cortadito, the gringos that work with me want to die. My producer stares at me and like, Because really? they love, like, drinking milk Bebe with como two tetero. drops no, no, of, no, no. yeah. No, no, no. De café, ¿qué es eso? Y pura agua en ese café. El, el café aguado, así transparente. No, eso tiene que manchar la taza. Totalmente, totalmente. totalmente. And you're doing a tour. Yes. I mean, you, you're doing no, everything. We're taking perfectly you, uh -huh. our book, our oh, tour. Here it is. Bueno, Maya. <gasps> tan, 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 tan. Maya's getting her copy of Perfectly You. I'm so curious to discover what you're going to discover about yourself reading this book, Maya. Oh, me But too. we're going on tour because uh -huh. I want to get it to people. I want to hug them and we're going to dance together. Isn't it and amazing? We're going to sign some books. So that connection, that, mm -hmm. that's why I wrote the book, is to connect people and to take this message to them. So these are the cities that we're announcing right now. This is happening starting on June 8th. We're going to be in Miami, yeah. New York, uh -huh. D.C., Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and Los Angeles, California, Yeah, where I hope to be joined by the powerhouse that please. is Maya Okada. Of course, I'll be there. You have to bless my book tour oh, please. with all your Maya energy. Total, total. <laughs> El agua bendita de Maya. El agua bendita de Maya, no de So LA is going to be the 16th of June at the Barnes and Nobles in the Grove, which is like a dream What location. a beautiful place, by the way. Bueno, you gotta bring that. the flavor, Maya. Oh, I'll be, there. I'll, I'll be there. I think you should give people at least three tips mm -hmm. to be perfectly you. Okay, let's do it. The first one is we are all brilliantly flawed, especially in life, but also in social media. Don't pretend to be perfect on social media. Ahí te digo, do like Maya does. Show the world who you really are. When you're tired, show that you're tired. When you're sad, show that you're sad. That's a great way to stop like pretending that we're perfect and okay and all that's, the time. And that's actually messing with our minds. Absolutely. Yes. So we're all brilliantly flawed. Embrace it in life, but especially in social media. Mm. That's mm. the one thing. Okay, perfect. The second thing, as Latinas, as women, let's stop tearing each other down. Let's use the differences that we have physical differences, emotional differences, our backgrounds, mm -hmm. as building blocks for our community to stand strong. Yes. O sea, 
no nos critiquemos, no yeah. nos tumbemos mutuamente. Yeah. Okay. No es una competencia. It's not a competition. We're stronger together. Totally. And, y, no, y si nosotros mismas nos destruimos, Absolutely. ¿Ah? ¿Quién nos va a ayudar? Entonces, we're all brilliantly flawed. Let's not tear each other down, especially as women and especially as Latina yeah. women. Yeah, and, and immigrants. Absolutely. I mean, we have it all to Absolutely. lose, so Absolutely. we have to stay together. And the last one is the fact that being perfectly you is actually more than about you or me. When you embrace this power of being real, when you show your real self to the world, your name, your accent, your background, your brilliant flaws, you're actually paving way for the next generation. You are being a part of something so much bigger than yourself. Don't say you're paying it forward. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Your Instagram, everything. You, people who are so lost in their lives that they don't follow you already. <laughs> where can they follow oh, you? I mean, for this, for this practical inspiration, for the messages on the book, for the book tour, and for more of my adventures with Maya. Mm -hmm. You can follow me at Mariana Atencio with the two, so it's double A, Mariana Atencio. Okay. Y Atencio is like Atención, but without the N, so with a C. <laughs> M-A-R-I-A-T-E-N-C-I-O. Awesome, thank you La so much. La que canta y baila, gracias. What? La que canta y baila? Mariana Atencio. You know what? That I used to be a singer, and people used to call me, are you Maya? La que canta? <laughs> But not Maya. <laughs> Maya, la que canta. <laughs> Thank you. I love you and I wish Yo you. Yo te amo, Maya. Te Gracias. amo y te deseo demasiada suerte. Eres inspiración para mí, sobre todo en este crossover, en este país tan increíble, ya maravilloso, de oportunidades, pero además tan, tan, como tan intimidante, ¿no? So next challenge that we're going to do, mm -hmm. when Maya comes out to the Grove for our book launch signing, mm -hmm. I'm going to interview you in English. We're going to have un conversatorio. Oh, let's do that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Thank you. Yeah, I love you. Thank you for listening to The Fuego Fams. I am Maya Ocando, and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I am Maya Ocando. Anywhere. Pretty simple. Thank you so much. Bye.